right? Mike is second signed with the Bengals. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, like a three million dollar deal. Or potentially keep, three point two. It's going down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the Dolphins franchise tagged him. Uh, that didn't yep. work. To, right to a to a kind of floundering year with New England. So yeah. Let's do it. All Let's good. <clears throat> the Dolphins had a busy day Monday. The first day teams and players were allowed to agree to contract terms. You guys know contracts can't be signed until 4 o'clock Wednesday, the start of the new league year. Miami lost Robert Hunt. Miami lost Christian Wilkins. Miami lost a whole lot of people. And how are they going to make up for it? What's up, Dolphins fans? Thanks for joining us for this week's Dolphins Deep Dive with Pert. I'm your host, South Florida Sun Sentinel Dolphins columnist Chris Perkins. That's Sun Sentinel columnist Dave Hyde. Thanks, as always, to our viewers for tuning in this week. We invite you to participate in our live chat. And I remind you, if you miss any part of this show, you can grab the podcast on Amazon, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. So the Miami Dolphins will enter free agency at 4 o'clock Wednesday in compliance with the salary cap. But how much money and how much talent will it require to improve a team that has Super Bowl hopes but hasn't yet won a playoff game. We'll talk about that today. Also, did the Dolphins Super Bowl window slam shut in Kansas City? Are you willing to give this Super Bowl run a one-year pause? We'll talk about that. And also, with so little money for major developments and only two significant draft picks, how do the Dolphins improve in this offseason? And speaking of improvements, what improvements that, that mean anything before December? You guys know the deal in December and January. The Dolphins have a 6-10 and 10 record. Not very good. We're going to talk about that and everything else on this edition. Let's dive in. All right, so Dave, hi. Listen, um, the Dolphins, I mean, Christian Wilkins, gone. Robert Hunt, gone. Andrew Van Ginkle, gone. They got cleaned out on Monday how do the Dolphins restock here, Dave Hyde? Well, I, I mean, what said all along, they, they started to a little. They, you know, they, they got their center, uh, athletic center from Tennessee. So that tells you one thing, either Connor Williams, they don't expect him back, or when he does come back, he'll be playing guard. Um, but I guess they have moving parts now there. Um, it's just, you know, to me, the big picture plan, what is it? What is it? Okay, it was started in 2019. We're going to trade good players away and get draft picks. Then, at two years later, we're going to spend a lot of money and draft pick. We don't care about draft picks anymore. We have plenty of them. And here we are two years later, and or three years later, I guess, by the timeline, and we're throwing away the players that were drafted at the start of it overboard because we, we mismanaged, you know, this comes down to just mismanaging the salary cap, uh, either cramming everything in for last season and trying to make a run then, or they just completely mismanaged it because, um, you know, it's almost criminal, criminal not to lose Christian Wilkins. You, you could say we don't want to pay a defensive tackle that much. I mean, that's within the realm of understand, you know, you can understand that, but to lose them for, Essentially nothing. I get it. They get a third round compensation pick, but you know, if, if they had just played smart and they could have signed them foot, they could have, if they had managed the cap properly or a little better, even um, fit them under there with the salary uh, uh, franchise tag right. and got a first round pick for them, at least get something of substance. Um, so, you know, I, we're, we're back to, it's almost like they're, making it up on the run right now of what to do and 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 what is the big picture plan the big picture plan right now is that it sounds like to sign Tua 
and uh, go go. We have a great quarterback route because we're paying them. Yeah, I you know that I agree with that, Dave, and I, and I totally disagree with the strategy of the Dolphins here. Uh, I wouldn't extend Tua. And look, you got to understand here all the draft picks that have been cleaned out this this offseason, the defensive draft picks, right? Christian Wilkins, Xavier Howard, Brandon Jones. Um, you're you're gonna you're gonna Jerome Baker. You could have a situation where the starting defense takes the field for the opener next season, and you've got two drafted players out there, Javon Holland at safety and maybe Cam Smith if he can win a starting cornerback position. The, the defensive situation here is dire. Oh, Van Ginkle, another another drafted player from the defense that you lost. And, and so it, it, it just seems that you should have been able to keep some of these. I favor keeping Wilkins and Xavier, and I know that would have been very tough financially, very tough. But you have like you have nothing defensively. Like Zach Sealer has been very effective, right? But he's been effective when he had Christian Wilkins beside him and when he had Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips. Now, if I'm an offense, I'm double team and sealer and good luck to everybody else. And look, I know that the Dolphins have signed um, a, a couple of inside linebackers, right? Um, Anthony Walker from Cleveland, Jordan Brooks from Seattle. They just, or I say, uh, agreed to terms, not signed, agreed to terms. And they've uh, they've recently agreed to terms with Shaq Barrett, the edge rusher from, from Tampa Bay. He's got seven and a half sacks the last two years. I, I just don't see how they can recover enough in, in, in this short amount of time to make a big impact on this defense, especially when things just, you know, when you have the, the injured guys, uh, Phillips and and and, uh, and Bradley Chubb, like you're, you're not going to have an effective pass rush. And like, it, I'm going to double team Sealer if I'm another team and I'm going to avoid Jalen Ramsey. And I have no idea how you're going to stop me. Well, they're, they're not, they're not done. Let's they're done at linebacker. I assume. Yeah. Uh, certainly inside linebacker. Inside. They need cornerback. I, I'd assume they're going to find another Shaq Barrett type, a guy who can hold the fort for them in their mind uh, the first half of the season maybe while Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb either get healthy or play back to health or something. You know, who knows how where they're, how long they're going to be out. Um, so I think they need the defensive tackle. I mean, they're going to need another, at least another body there. Um, then you move to the offense. We haven't. I mentioned cornerback, right? But they, they, on offense, they, they still need. I, I assume they need another receiver. They got yep. they're a tight end. Mm -hmm. um, they're set at running back. They need help. I would guess on the offensive line. I, mm -hmm. I you know, so uh, they have two drafts for the first and second round drafting, and those guys need to step on the field right away and play this year. None of this. None of this, uh, you know, year three and four. Well, he's a pretty good, he's a nice player. Um, well, you, you need to get him on the field. Right. Uh, let me say hello to uh, some of the people in the chat. A lot of our regulars are here. Cat for Life, Peter McDowell, uh, Lofi Anime, Newt 942001, Cat for Life. Uh, Mark Jones in here, uh, David Lazer, Lazar, I, I think I always butcher your name, I'm sorry. Uh, John Yang, uh, Franklin Stubbs, hello to all of you all. Um, who we got, Ender Fireplays, uh, YT, I know I'm butchering some of these names, some of these handles. Judy Williams in here, that's because Dave Hyde is in here. Judy doesn't show up when Dave Hyde is not here. Hey, Judy, uh, welcome. <laughs> Effie Michon. So uh, listening from Israel, glad to glad to hear that. Uh, Clark Hartman in here. So um, listen, um, One Eye Jack uh, 233 is, is back. So uh, good, good to see all of you all. Um, listen, hi, what, what about the uh, Janu Smith signing? Uh, I think it was uh, Lofi who asked, um, uh, what, what's the story on why Atlanta moved on from Janu after one year? And did the Gaseki contract make Janu uh, signing look a bit overpaid? Uh, Janu was cut mostly for salary reasons. I think it saved Atlanta five and a half million or something like that. Not a significant amount, but enough. 
I do like the signing. He's not overpaid. I, I like the amount. Um, I, I, and I, I like that they got a receiving tight end and addressed that part of the offense. To me, Dave, most of the changes for the Dolphins this season, you don't you had good talent, and I think you have playoff caliber talent, even with the gutting that we saw yesterday. They're gonna get other players in. But I, I think you've got to play better schematically and philosophically. Getting the receiving tight end is part of that. I've written about this numerous times. I've hammered on this for like a year and a half. You need a power run game. Uh, it's good that Jalen Ramsey will be shadowing players like Anthony Weaver, the new defensive coordinator, said. Uh, I like these changes uh, that are being made. I think that's what's necessary more than personnel what, what do you think about John U. Smith? Is that going to help? Is it significant? A move step in the right direction? What What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a step in the right direction, as you said. Or you know, veteran receiving tight end. Um, you know, I, I think the guy they really are looking at on the roster is Julian Hill, though. I think they want him mm-hmm. to take the next step from and and you know, or take a step to where he can be he can be counted on um, regularly. So that'll be interesting to see over the off season and into the training camp and all that where where his game's at um but to me the number one thing about all of these you know the finding a tight end getting a third receiver is you got to alleviate some of the pressure off Tyreek Hill he's yes. he's has 170 171 targets the last two years um that's right behind uh CD Lamb last year and over the two years it's, uh, you know, number two in the league for targets, which you can say, well, he's your best player. Of course, you're going to do that. But he's also in December. He's getting hurt. I mean, why is he getting hurt? Because he's he, he's being thrown at so much. He's getting hit so much. And now he's turning 30. And so it, you, one of the prime goals is obviously to feature Tyree Kill, but keep him healthy for December and hopefully January when you're really going to need them to, to win big games. And, and so how do you do that? You, you, um, as you said, Perk, uh, philosophically, you need to branch out a little, I think. And, and w- w- what do you think of the tight end? What, what does Mike McDaniel think of the tight end? It's, it's, it's almost gone the way of the fullback in this offense um, where actually a fullback probably has had a more pronounced role than the tight end in this yeah. offense. Um, so, um, that that's the offense. That that's my thoughts on what does Mike McDaniel want to do to expand some roles and take some pressure off Tyreek Hill. Right, I agree that this is you know at this point um, <clears throat> to me it's 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 about the style of play that you play. Now I like Tyreek getting all those targets. I think that he can handle the load. It's just that if I'm a defense, I know that if I stop Tyreek Hill, I stop this offense. Jalen Waddle is not going to beat me. There's no tight end. The run game is, yeah, you know, they were, again, they were one and six against playoff teams last year. They rushed for over 100 yards in four of those games. It didn't make a difference. So the, the run, you've got to get a consequential run game. Um, you know, uh, again, I say this also, Raheem Mostert with, I believe it was the 18 rushing touchdowns. It was a franchise record, but only one of those came in a game against a playoff team. And so you, you've got to figure out how do we beat the better teams in the league. And to me, it, it's mostly strategic, philosophical, the red zone offense, the, the third down offense, the goal line offense, all of these situations. That, that to me, is, is what the big deal is here. Uh, David Laser was asking about uh, compensatory draft picks. Those will come next year the 2025 draft, they won't come in, in this draft. So, um, but there are, there are going to be, depending on how much, um, how, how much uh, they, they do in, in uh, off season, uh, what, who they acquire, there will be some, uh, some, some, um, some compensatory picks. Hi, uh, let me ask you this also. Um, when, when we're talking about the Dolphins in this off season, are you optimistic about the future? Because, you do in, in in June. You get the Xavier Howard money, eighteen and a half million, and then player acquisition goes all the way until the trade deadline. And we saw them get Bradley Chubb and Jeff Wilson at the trade deadline two seasons ago. So does that kind of it, you, you can't be as fatalistic as some of us have been right about yesterday because that was just the first day of player acquisition and improvements. 
Well, here, here's the issue. You know, you're not going to keep everybody, obviously. That, yep. but when you lose players, you want to have philosophically, philosophically and strategically um, had a plan in place where you've drafted young players behind them. Like, like the, the, the idea, obviously, in drafting Cam Smith is they figured they were going to lose Xavier Howard this offseason. Right. right. Uh, and and the disappointment there for whatever reason, and we'll see, you know, Vic Fangio didn't play him. Um, he, he, he didn't make himself be played, Cam Smith. It, it might be the, the best thing that ever happened to Cam Smith, that, that Vic Fangio called out some things about him that – weren't going to translate the pros and now he works on him. He's motivated. So we'll see. But that, that, that's the thing I can understand losing Zayvon and Howard. They drafted Cam Smith. They don't have anybody behind Christian Wilkins. Um, the, the, the Van Ginkle thing is they really needed him because of the injuries to their edge rushers right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert Hunt, there, there's, you know, he, he, he was your very physical offensive lineman and, and and uh, young and and so but i i get i get not paying the dollars that those guys you know got and and god bless them for getting that that money but i i get if if it was a philosophical reason we're towing the line we're not going to pay more and it was somewhat with that with wilkins last year um mm-hmm. in the off season um and but but the point being they're not getting they don't have any young players behind these guys to step up and take their roles. And, you know, they're going to miss a team that really needed almost to get more physical in the trenches loses two very physical players for them. And that, and that hurts. Well, you know, hi, <clears throat> here's what's interesting is they could have some answers on the roster. If you look at the guard position, you've got Liam Eikenberg, Robert Jones, and Lester Cotton. If you look at the cornerback position, you've got Cater Kohu, Cam Smith, Nick Needham. But yeah, but right, but but you're you're it's a drop off though, right? That's the yeah. that's the yeah. none of those are Xavier Howard or Robert Hunt. Well, look, we're talking guys on NFL rosters, I get, but we're talking roles. The yeah. role of Cater Kohu is not to take Xavier Xavier Howard's. Uh, right. Post. We saw that last year. He, there, there's a role for those guards. Right. I'm not sure it's as you, you don't want to. It's sort of, it's sort of like uh, last year um, when when Win stepped in and and oh he started oh and, oh he got hurt. Well he always gets hurt. If that's why New England released him. I mean he, you yep. can't count on him. So. Um, so the, the, some some of the guards showed some promise last year, and if you're you're talking depth and all that, um, but Eichenberg at this point is a guy he, he's depth. I mean, he's not right. starting quality in the NFL that we've seen. So unless uh, big changes coming or improvement in the off season, um, if you're counting on him, um, it sort of backs up the idea that uh, boy losing. Um, Robert Hunt was a big, big loss. And, and unless they find somebody um, more on the defensive line, losing Christian Wilkins is a big loss, too. Yep. By the way, Hyde, uh, John Yang uh, suspects you're not wearing pants. I, I just want you to know that from the check. I, I just want you to know that. That's, that's, that's the suspicion. I, I, I'm not wearing I'm wearing shorts. I'm not. John, John, extra bonus credit to you. <laughs> That's beautiful. All right, we got these two real quick, Hi, One one on offense, one on defense. Mark Jones says these additions and turnover of the roster is a ready-made, built-in excuse for the team and the defense. Weaver, the defensive coordinator, is going to need four players to learn and adjust to the defensive scheme. Then we get this uh, on the offense from one Eye Jack 233. I'm on board and understand all the moves that have been made so far. Now, please add Derrick Henry. Your, your thoughts on either of those, offense or defense? I, I think they're loaded at running back. They have plenty of running backs. Now, if, if Mike McDaniel wants to change his philosophy, almost 180 from a speed team to a power team, um, and then by all means, sign Derrick Henry. I, I, I'm, I, you know what? I'm, Derrick Henry might be the exception of running back where you'd say, okay, I can see – um, signing a guy like him, he adds something. Okay, I, but I'm not pounding the table for him. If 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 
McDaniel sees that, okay, philosophically, I want to go in this direction more, then I get it. Um, but, you know, it takes two to, to sign a deal. Would Derek, would Derek Henry come? He's going to go where the money is. But say the money's roughly equal. Baltimore is a pound the, pound the ball team that, that fits his style more, I would think. Yeah, yeah. The Dolphins would need him for situational running. And by the way, Hyde, I'm not so sure they're set at running back because Mostert is, what, 31. Achan was, like, healthy as often as he was hurt last season. Yeah. But yeah. I know what you're saying. You you can't prioritize that. You're right, right. look at this team. Um, Hyde, let's move on to our next segment. And and this is a hot topic. Are, are you willing to pause the Dolphins' Super Bowl hopes for one year as they recover from this mess. And, you, you know, look, um, I, you know, you, you've got to be fair to the Dolphins here, right? That they, they Bert, probably we've been fair for 25 years. I mean, how many, how many years? How many, are you kidding me? They tanked for two years. They said winning doesn't matter in the front office. I get it. They're, Brian Flores thought winning mattered and all that. And, and then they came up with this plan, and here we are. We're right yeah. back at go. So when you say pause, I really don't know what that means. Super Bowl aspirations. They haven't won a playoff game since 2000. I know. I know. It's, like, it's a ridiculous phrase, isn't it? Super Bowl aspirations. But this team, this team was built to win a Super Bowl. And what, how, however far away they are, this is year three. Is it fair to put the same expectations on them in year three as you put on them in year two? I think it is. I, I think it is. I'm the a big no excuses league. guy. The big leagues. You're paid to win. All right. right. This this whole massive rebuild that they underwent under Chris Greer. It's it's whether wherever they are, they put themselves in this financial problem that they they got to work out this quagmire. They got to get out of. Um, and yeah. they, and the way to get out of it is to make good football decisions get guys who can help you and they aren't going to be the headline guys i wouldn't think right now um but they're going to be you know, you know the center and the and the two linebackers and and you know they got to find a couple cornerbacks and 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 maybe not you know guys that you're going to go oh yeah they got that guy but when you when you sit down and you look back that they have to be like connor williams types where he was signed mm-hmm. as like Okay, well, okay, they got this guy. Well, he turned out to be a really good player. Um, so, and then draft, they got so everything. Ha- their margin for error is very small this off this off season. But no, I'm not. I'm not. You know, taking pressure off them when <laughs> this is a situation that be. You know, we're, we're here at the end of a five year cycle with the with this program, right? Yep. At, and where are they? So that that at some point. Um, they got to win something to take pressure off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we, we've got a poll up here. Has the Dolphins' proverbial window closed? Um, that, that's, a, that's a good question with this crew. Listen, Jose Cabrera says on the chat, hopefully they can re-sign Connor Williams. That would do a lot to fix the offensive line. But they, they've, got, they've got the center, Aaron Brewer, from, from Tennessee. And, and, of course, Connor could move to left guard. That's his natural position. Uh, Brian Jenkins says drafting a defensive tackle in the first or second round is possible, too. These are both correct because your, your line does need help on both sides. But again, Dave, I, but how, how like if you draft a lineman, he's not going to come in and probably right be plug and play like a Robert Hunt. So so realistically, do you cut the Dolphins a little slack and say, OK, just win one playoff game this year because we understand you went for it in years one and two. It didn't work out. We've got to realistically give you some time to retool financially. And then you go for it again next year when you, I mean, two is going to be on the books for 50 million, but is that realistic? You got, you got a lot of guys coming due for contracts too. Yeah. Next year is going to be brutal. So, I, I mean, it's not like, Oh yeah, we're we're gonna reorganize things. We'll be okay. You, you got a lot of important decisions coming up next year that could be a lot of a lot of big money too, or you lose them. You know, you got. In fact, you got to make those decisions now almost. Right. You know, and, and right. because as we saw with Wilkins and uh, Hunt and and to a lesser extent Van Ginkle, because he was no one really saw his production until this season. 
Um, but you, you got, you got, you, you, this is the time. And, and, you know, they've done it a couple, you, you've seen it a couple of times where they sign guys already ahead of time. And, and, yep. you know, so that, that's, uh, but I, I'm not giving them slack. Are you kidding? We're, we're, this is a big leagues. Okay. You, you, you're, you're here to win. Um, Steve Ross giving you every, uh, you know, all, all the financial hope you need. He backed your plan. Um, yep. this is, and, and this is where we are with it. Um, Brian Jenkins says that window has closed. Terry Lynch says the window was closed. We were built for last year. I kind of believe that, Terry. Yeah, I don't disagree. I, it, 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 they have to be perfect on their decisions this offseason to, you know, get a, a roster that that can I don't, not match last year because they won't have the veteran on the line that Hunt and Wilkins probably were a talent. But, um to compete with last year's roster. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you, Perk. I'm not sure this next year's roster can be better. Yeah. And, and Judy Williams says this, we need to fire Greer and everyone else for even putting themselves in the position they found themselves yesterday. I, you know, you're, you're big on the finances and, and the, and you know, you put yourself in a bad position. You've also been big on going after injured player, the players with an injury history. You had an outstanding column on that topic this week. The, the, the Dolphins put themselves in this position. The, the fire Greer, the, the, the fire McDaniel, what, what do you think? Are, are you, because right now, you know, my thing has been, they need to win two playoff games. If they don't win two playoff games, if I'm Steve Ross, I'm probably starting over. No Greer, no McDaniel, no Tua. If they win one playoff game, I've got some questions. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've got that backwards. If they win no playoff games, I'm probably starting over. If they win one playoff game, and eh, maybe a couple of people stay. If they win two playoff games, probably everybody stays. But if, if they don't win a playoff game, don't you have to make a major change here, Hyde? Or are you wait and see, let's see how it unfolds? I love it. March, March. We're fine. <laughs> I, I, I love but, it. Bring in the fire, Perk. Bring in the fire. But, but they, this, go, this goes to, this speaks to, uh, if I'm Steve Ross, I, I've given you incredible resources, incredible yeah. talent. You squandered my money, my talent, and my draft picks, and you didn't yeah. even win a playoff game. How? Why would I give you a fourth year? Mainly squandered time. I mean, squandered yeah. time. Ross did something... I hated, and I don't know, Philadelphia 76ers did it, and look how it turned out for them, yeah. is tanking, right. tanking, just throwing them in. And and I get some in some rebuilds, you know, every, you go through it, but to, you know, throw away a couple seasons like that. Again, my way is the Miami Heat way. Figure it out every year. Right. And come in and compete hard. Try to, And if you don't get it, say, hey, we'll figure it out next offseason. And then figure that out. So, uh, but how do the Dolphins get better? It's simple at this point. If they give two of the big money, they're saying he's a great quarterback. He's got to carry people. And can can he can he take that step up to that level of quarterback where he's he's with lesser talent as he'll have to have with the big contract, not this year, but coming up. Um, so, you know, as far as Chris Greer and McDaniel, the my thought at the start of this rebuild, when they started tanking, Chris Greer, he's either going to the Hall of Fame because he's going to have a lot of resources that no general manager, no owner is given in a general manager, so just tank and get draft picks. And, and he's either going to the Hall of Fame or he's going to be fired in five years. Strangely, neither has happened. It's just business as usual with the Dolphins. And then we move on to the to the next season with everybody saying, well, they couldn't afford a Christian Wilkins and, and all this. They got a compensatory pick for him. So, um, um, yeah, look, the, the, the Chris Greer squarely has the pressure on him now. I mean, I, I, I don't think I called him general manager for life. Um, and, you know, maybe we'll see what happens this season. Uh, this from Pete's takes. Do you guys think we upgraded at linebacker? I believe so. I will say this. Um, Jordan Brooks is a tackling machine, right? I, uh, I'm trying off the top of my head. I think the two, three years ago, he had like 180, two years ago, like 160 tackles. But nobody that they've signed so far, and they've made some decent signings, John U. Smith and Jordan Brooks and, and, and um, uh, the tight Anthony Walker. 
Uh, they made some decent signing, even Shaq Barrett, but none of these are Pro Bowl caliber guys. None of these, I don't think, are at the level of Christian Wilkins, Robert Hunt, or Xavier Howard. Uh, you know, you've kind of upgraded Jerome Baker to me with with uh, with with Jordan Brooks. He's a tackling machine, but again, you haven't added. I, I'm not sure that you have uh, matched the talent that you've lost, and it's only day one. So let's not be you know fatalistic. But I'm not sure that you're going to add the talent that you lost. A scheme tweak would help, but. I, you know, so, yeah, you did upgrade at linebacker, but I'm not sure that this is going to be a earth shattering, uh, a huge upgrade where you're like, wow, now we've got like a Bobby Wagner. That, I don't think that this is it. What, hi, are, are they going to be able to upgrade sufficiently? Do you do you have faith? I know you have to look into a crystal ball, but do you have faith they'll be able to do that? Uh, do I have faith? No, I don't. I don't, I don't trust in this organization, um, but. Can they do it? Yeah. I mean, again, as with the linebackers, as with Johnny Smith, as the guy, look at the guys they've signed. None of them, none, you look at their names and you're not wowed. But that doesn't mean they have proper roles for them in their system. And, and so much is this system fit. And I don't know what Anthony Weaver, where we're going to be at, um, what he's exactly looking for um, beyond yeah. – immediate help because he's got injured players or holes across the roster. Um, but, um, you know, I think they're set at linebacker now. Is it an upgrade? You know, I, I, I like Jerome Baker. He, I, he, 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 what was he fourth or seventh in career dolphin career tackles? Um, yeah. and he had speed, he covered people, which is one of the prime roles of, of linebackers in today's era. You need that guy. Um, so, um, was he flashy? No. Are these guys flashy? No, but that's what they're going to have to make do within this off season. I, I would hope they don't go out and get Jerry Sneed from Kansas city for a number one pick and, right. and all that. I mean, that'd be the big splashy move, but you know, they need these number one picks. They, they've gone two years with minimal draft picks and yeah, you know, that's that. That's where you you solve your salary cap and your financial decisions is with young players, and 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 they haven't coming into the pipeline the last two years, and and you can't make it three years. Yeah, yeah, young players and and a quarter or and or a quarterback on a rookie contract, and right, the rookie contract thing is right. That's that's out the window now. Um, Scott Pro uh, brings up some very good points on the chat. X hasn't been a pro bowler in like three years. Hunt has never been a pro bowler. Was Wilkins ever a pro bowler? He's correct on all of those. But the value, their value to the Dolphins is really what matters here. And like you said, Hunt was their most physical offensive lineman. Um, X was somebody who deterred quarterbacks a little bit, right? That you're looking at Jalen Ramsey and then you look at X and it's like, wow, we better go to Cater in the slot. Now it, it's it's going to be, well, we could go to Cam Smith or we could go to Cater. We can just avoid uh, Ramsey altogether. And, and Wilkins, he provided that toughness. So, no, you're right, Scott. None of them were pro bowlers, but their value to the Dolphins was extremely high. And that's what they've got to replace. It's it's you know, your your, your value to a team is, is could be different to two to different teams. Well, it tells you the value to the league, the contracts they signed. OK. I mean, it, when Christian Wilkins got basically 85 million guaranteed, and and Robert Hunt got 63 million guaranteed, that tells you they were valued for the, the for what they do uh, on the open market. And yeah, I, I agree, they weren't Pro Bowl. They, none of none of them had Pro Bowl, you know, stamps to them. Um, it, we could quibble why Christian Wilkins wasn't there, um, and Hunt. I think part of that is nobody knows guards and, and the Dolphins are a passing team and he was hurt this year. But if you're if you're talking to football people, um, they love Robert Hunt's game. And, and I think that bore out again on the salary he got from Jacksonville. Yeah. And, and look, some people on the text and, and have said that these guys were overpaid. And, and I agree. Right. Like Brandon Jones, I think and Van Ginkle was probably the only one reasonable, but. Christian Wilkins, Brandon Jones, Robert Hunt. I, if I'm the Dolphins, I'm not paying them 
what they what they got on the market. So that's. But, but let me ask you: Was Chubb overpaid? Yes. Was Armstead overpaid? Yeah. Anybody who hits the free right. agent market, you know, they're going to be overpaid by fifteen, twenty percent, probably, right. just because of the of the they're available. Okay, and and um, so and the salary cap went up this year, so yeah. you know you got to put that inflated number in it too um so yeah they were overpaid but that's what you do in free agency yeah yeah it is that's that's the nature of free agency uh troy checks this in and this is this is very interesting i expect any gm to identify and draft hall of fame potential talent in the first round greer has failed miserably at that respectfully troy i will push back and I will say that, look, recently he missed on Noah Igbenogany, right? But look, Austin Jackson, Tua Tonga Bailoa, Jalen Phillips, um, Jalen Waddell, uh, Christian Wilkins, he's, he's done pretty well in the first two rounds, actually. Javon Holland, a second rounder, it's like the third round is kind of where he starts to fall off a little bit. Um, but, but I will also say this. The draft, they've only got two significant draft picks, right? They've got a first and a second. Uh, thanks, Steve Ross, for losing that third for the tampering thing. You could really use it this year. Um, so, like, you can't you can't really count on a whole lot of help from the draft, can you? Well, first of all, let me let me. My thought is they lost that not because of the tampering thing, even though the league they the league melded these two reports together: the tampering and the tanking, not tanking. Hundred thousand right. dollar to Brian Flores thing, and I think that's why they lost it. But and they they sloughed it off as tampering. Everybody tampers. That's they couldn't have been that. So, anyways, okay, back to um, what were we going back to here? The the idea that um, you know where the Dolphins the, go. The, for- the, the draft. The, yeah, the draft. You know, oh, the, 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 and, and yeah, and, and how how much can you help? How much can the draft help? And how is Greer done in mean, first round? Whatever. The, the 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 comment about Chris Greer and Hallman, I, look, I, I've been critical of Chris Greer, but look at some of his draft picks. Minka Fitzpatrick, Laramie Tunsil, Christian yeah. Wilkins. Minka, I put this in my column today. Minka Fitzpatrick's on, tra- on the track for Hall of Fame. Yeah. Okay. Laramie Tunsil, he's, he's a quality, you know, top whatever, where he is now even, uh, left tackle. Uh, and and Christian Wilkins is a top tier defensive tackle. Um, none of them are with the franchise anymore, for very for, all for different reasons. But the point is, my point would be Chris Greer can draft well enough. Um, it's the managing of the roster and 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 where you go with the finances and all that and and building a team. Um, that's the hard part. And and or the harder part for this franchise at this point, and that's where they failed. Okay, Dave, let us move on to segment number three. And I, you know, almost hate to ask this because it it negates everything that we're talking about now. But what is the significance of anything the Dolphins do before December? And and I ask that because look, we've seen them go to eight and three. And then to nine and three, we've seen them have the number one offense in the league, and it hasn't mattered. They're they're four and ten in December and January. McDaniel's teams are opposite of Brian Flores' teams, right? Brian Flores' teams started slow and finished fast, and McDaniel's teams start fast and finish slow. Does, does what happen? I mean, does, does any of this make a difference? Like, are you if they get to eight and three or five and zero oh or? Are, are you just yawning and saying, eh, wait till December, or is all of this significant? No, I, I think it's all significant, and, um, you know, you can tie it in. Yeah, of course they need to play better in December, but especially this year, look who they're going to start without their edge rushers. They're going to start without some missing big names that they have. How do they, how do they fill in with, with the guys that they're going to fill in with? And they're not done. We don't even know some of the guys yet. Um, how do they draft? Do they, can their draft picks get on the field? To me, this is all significant to setting up December. Okay, what what can we expect? You know, for December to be different. Um, so yeah, I, I think it all I think it all matters. And and beyond that, what the heck am I going to write if in? in- <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
why I said I hate to even bring up the topic, Dave. It just, it just makes us irrelevant until Thanksgiving, right? Um, but but I'll, I'll say this. I agree with you, and here's why. Uh, it... it it, it's a testament to their way of thinking. And that's what I always think about the off season and, and all these moves, because, you know, I know that uh, there's a lot of outsiders who aren't sports fans and people will ask me all the time, well, what do you do in the off season? Or that stuff doesn't matter. Yeah, it all matters because it's, it's how they think. And, and what, how do you solve problems in the off season? Because that does lead to stuff in the regular season. So, what is your thought pattern right now? Does it make sense? Is it legit? Do you know what you're doing? I do think all of these things matter, although the December, the December, January thing, I just can't get it out of my head. Though. Like, it's like, like Buffalo, everything's... That's like saying in Buffalo, none of it matters till the playoffs. Well, I mean, okay, they haven't, you know, they need to go. Every team has something. Every team has something. Yeah. Remember going into last last year, the big question was the first game. Did did the Chargers have their defense solved Mike McDaniel's offense? And so all of a sudden we come out and we see new motion, new wrinkles from that Mike McDaniel had worked on and the offense had worked on. Over. So to me, it all matters. What and and part of it is what wrinkles is McDaniel going to come up with for his offense now against the better defense? And what is Tua going to do this off season to get better against the better teams? Right. And look, I, I can't believe we've gone this far without mentioning Tua. Like this is this has got to be a Dolphins record, right? Uh, Dave Harbour saves the day here. Actually, other people have mentioned Tua, but Dave, one of our regulars, asked, do you believe Tua will play on a fifth year option or will he receive an extension? If no playoff uh, win this year, the front office needs to be cleaned out. A new GM would want to have a new quarterback. And you're right, Dave Harbour. And here, here, this has been my thing that um, we're talking about offseason and does it matter in the decision making. Extending Tua is one of those decisions. And I've said that I want to stay liquid if I'm Steve Ross, that if this thing goes sideways and you don't win a playoff game, I'm probably getting rid of my GM. And the new GM is going to want to pick his own coach and his own quarterback. And I don't want to give the new GM a quarterback who has, you know, got a four-year, fifty million dollar deal, or you know, four at, at you know, four years at whatever, you know, the, the the big contract. So I'm staying liquid this year, and and I'm doing that for that reason, and because I don't think that Tua is worth the the extension. I don't think he's proved it with health or performance. But what, when we're talking about things that matter in the off season, what do you think about Tua? And I, well, I know your decision, but expound on that. Well, well, my thoughts are are, you know, and I've said this. There's two ways to win. One is with the great quarterback on a big contract with lesser talent around him, Kansas City model. Um, Buffalo's challenging every year with that model. Um, Cincinnati's going to have to uh, with Burrow. I, I mean. You, the other model is the San Francisco model with Purdy on a rookie contract. You have great players around the quarterback to help them. Um, you know, a good quarterback, not great. Who are the, which one are the dolphins? And that's, you know, we talk about, we talk a lot about Chris Greer to me, 60% of a, a GM's job in the NFL right now is to get the quarterback, right? Because of how important we talk about it being a team game okay, it's a team game, but it's an individual game within that team game. And the one individual that matters so much more than anybody else is a quarterback. And and so what do they have in Tua? Let's ask this. If he was a free agent now, where would he, what would his contract offers be? Um, I asked a couple personnel guys that over the last few months and, 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 and didn't really get a it was kind of a shoulder shrug. They weren't sure what kind of a contract they would get. If Kirk Cousins got the deal, he get is Tua Kirk Cousins. Um, so you know, I, I don't know. All I know is for him to be a great quarterback, you need that that next step up up up. And I, I would overpay next off season if that's what it comes to, rather than paying this off season too. Because if if he has a great season, means the Dolphins have a great season. McDaniel has a great season, and Tua should know. And McDaniel that that working with Mike McDaniel is the best thing that's been for his NFL career. And and so I, I would overpay next year rather than pay uh, this year. 
Right. I agree. I agree. Hey, uh, Patrick Mullen asked this, and I know this gets to, to, to your heart. Uh, does this team even have a long-term strategy being enacted by the front office, or is this just a year-to-year -year thing to save their jobs? I think they had the long-term thing with the rebuild, and then they come in, and it's like we're going to be the L.A. Rams even though they look more like the Brooklyn Nets right now. And and now this this thing is kind of, you know, gone a little after yesterday. So I I, I think the I, I think this is the kind of the was it Mike Tyson? Everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. I, I think that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah, I think every, they had the plan through the first five years. Yep. And the plan was to win in year five. Right. And now we're moving into, let's see, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20, yeah, year six. six. And this is where the bills come due. Yeah. And right. you're seeing that start to happen here. And it's a lot of tough decisions to make in the front office right now. A lot. I, I mean, um, you, you know, and, and, and it's not going to stop now because there's a wave of young players. And do you pay them? Do you not pay them? Do you get compensation? Pay? You know, Everybody's saying, well, they got a compensation pick. They could get two compensation picks. Mm -hmm. Okay, all of a sudden we're valuing compensation picks from an organization the last three years. It has the least draft capital in, in, in NFL history on purpose. That, that's what, that was their plan. You know, so not, but all of a sudden now comp, you know, third round picks matter. So again, we're going such 180s on the, on the plan right. that, that, that right. there's no stability of Here's what we want to sustain. And, and you know, do you really want to sustain that? They didn't win anything last year. And and, and it could be because of injuries. It could be because of, uh, for a million reasons. But um, I, I'm with you, Perk. I'm not sure they, it's a day-to-day -day plan at this point. Ben's rule says uh, Tua led the league in passer rating in 2022 and passing yards in 2023, earning Pro Bowl honors in the latter I don't know why he isn't already paid. I, I think that he isn't because he hasn't showed me that he's the transitional or transformational, transitional, transformational quarterback that you kind of need here. And like you say, Hyde, if, if he isn't that guy, then you have to take kind of that San Francisco and Philadelphia model where you build all around the quarterback. I, look, Jalen Hurts is not going to the Hall of Fame. And, and Brock Purdy is good, but we don't know how good he is right now. Neither of those guys are Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes, but their teams win because they have that system. So to me, the Dolphins, right, the Dolphins need to make a choice. Like, is Tua going to be a Mahomes, a, a guy who makes everybody better? I don't see that. I see him more in the Brock Purdy, Jalen Hurts mold where he can make timely plays and he can carry you for a two or three game stretch, but not all 17 in the playoffs. And so that that's why I think Tua isn't already paid, uh, plus for health reasons also. But I just don't see it in Tua. He's a Pro Bowl quarterback, but not a superstar quarterback that makes everybody around him better. That's what I think. Yeah, look, he's a great player when when everything's perfect, when the pop, pop, pocket is perfect and the defense isn't rushing him. When when against the last half of the league in defense, he's been great. And the question is, when the game starts to you know disintegrate around him, can he create plays? You know, can he can he not r run the first play that was called, but now create a second or third play because? Uh, everything's broken up in front of them. And, and, you know, that's what we need to see. And that, you know, cause you play good defenses, things aren't going to go to, to plan. Uh, you know, you, you're not gonna be able to run the perfect play every time. And so, you know, that's what he's got to be working on this off season. And then that's what you, I, I would need to see before giving him a big contract. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's see, I'm seeing some Derek Henry to uh, Baltimore. So um, oh, you did. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. I, I'd say if you're Henry, that's a perfect marriage. And if you're Baltimore, that's a perfect marriage. Um, again, if you're the Dolphins, that's a nightmare. Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's one of the teams you couldn't get by in December last year. It didn't even come close. Um, and here they've loaded up with the, the one guy who's almost perfect for them.
Yeah, yeah, it's 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 you incredible. Were, Brett, so, you, Brett missing out on Derrick Henry? What's that? If you're the Dolphins, would you have gone after Derrick Henry? Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, let, look, I, I think you need that element. And look, you you need a, a physicality in your run game, and you need a physicality on your team overall. The offensive and defensive lines, it, it's one of the reasons why you can't beat Baltimore and Buffalo and Kansas City is because you get beaten right up front. They, they establish the line of scrimmage. They establish dominance and control. And this team does not have that mentality anywhere. Wilkins had it. David Long has it. Um, uh, what Deshaun Elliott had it. But Jalen Ramsey and and Jerome Baker and and Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips, Xavier, and how they weren't take your head off type guys. They they were guys who you would trust to babysit your kids. You need a little insanity, a little crazy, a little physicality on this team. And I'm hoping that that's one of the things that they get this off season. That that's what I'm hoping. And that, and I think that as far as the physicality and that mindset, Derrick Henry could have brought it last year. I was on the I was on the Dave uh, Dave uh, the um, Dalvin Cook bandwagon, and it's a good thing the Dolphins didn't trust me on that one because that turned out to be a disaster for Dalvin Cook. But you need that that element to me. Yeah, Derrick Henry is the exception to the running back rule, I think, in that um, usually all, all running backs are pretty much the same. I, my, my question, of course, is how much does he got left in the tank? Does he have a season left? I mean, that's really what you're banking on if you're Baltimore, right? You, 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 all of a sudden, now you have Lamar Jackson and and – and Derrick Henry, it, w- it would have been nice to alleviate, to make defenses honor the running game in, in a way they don't really with the Dolphins. They, the Dolphins run for a lot of yards, but you don't see defenses setting up to stop the run. Right, exactly, exactly. So that's 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 the big thing with that. Uh, um, Derrick Henry, uh, people are Finn's rule says uh, two years and sixteen million. So. That's a yeah. That's a pretty. That's a that's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good price and uh, nine million uh, fully guaranteed in the first year. So yeah, for a title run, he's a he's a finishing piece. So I, I think that's a pretty good price. Um, all right, let, let's finish it up here with this. Um, what do you see happening for the Dolphins in the next few weeks as far as filling holes? Is will it be done at an acceptable level? Um, I, I think that they're going to be able to find some some guys that, you know, look, uh, Jordan Brooks is a good signing and Shaq Barrett is a good sign. I think they're going to be able to find some guys that can help you get to just to throw out a number 10 and seven. But I don't think you're going to get the quality of where you're going to look at this team and go, OK, yeah, they replaced those guys. They should win the AFC East over Buffalo. I, I don't see that. I see them getting to a playoff level and then you kind of take it from there in the next few weeks with these acquisitions. What, what do you think as far as the, the so do you see them going for a guy like then Sneed, the cornerback in Kansas City? I mean, where are we at with that, Perk? No, I don't. I don't see them doing that. I wish, I, you know, I think they're going to make one splash move, but I think that's too big of a move for the Dolphins. I, I would love to see that because, look, I think that all you got defensively is is Ramsey and another cornerback. Because again, early you aren't going to have your two edge rushers. You aren't going to have anybody else in the middle with Sealer. Uh, and I'm, I say that because I just don't think you're going to get players of that caliber. So it, it's I, I, splash move. Boy, I, 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 it's whoever's available. Um, it, it, it could be an edge rusher. It could be a cornerback. Um, I don't think there's a splash safety out there. Henry would have been the splash move. For, that would have been a splash move. That would have been a splash move. Two yeah. years. Uh, that, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I'm around to that. When I first heard, I nah, but I, I get it. But anyways, that's gone now. So I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I don't, I don't see them making a splash move. I don't see that they have the money right now and the money in June is going to go. It sounds like the two is contract on. So that's all. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. so, um, you know, to me, just make good fundamental football decisions. It doesn't matter if people get all excited about them. Now the question is, can they help you win games in, in September? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's what this is about. It's, it's about uh, this year because, the, the, the future the future is like January, right? I mean, next year, that's how, it. How do you beef up your special teams from last year? I, I, I thought they'd be in the market for a punter. Maybe they still are. Um, I, I but, thought they'd get a, you know, I'm sure 
Walker, does he play special teams? He he, he has in, at the yeah. start of the year, so I assume he's a special team signing. Um, but you know that was atrocious last year. So you got you know that that's how you can without the big names you can manufacture some wins. Yeah, and I, I'll, I'll say this also, Dave, that uh, you know when you mention special teams, those dudes are usually the guys on the lower end of the roster. Make of this whatever you want, but I, I think the Dolphins have almost as many undrafted guys on the roster as fourth through seventh round picks. Um, I, I think the undrafteds are Brandon Peely, Cater Kohu, Robert Jones, and Nick Needham. And then the draftees, I think, are Ryan Hayes and and uh, Blake Ferguson, Jason Sanders. There's like it's like a seven to four count, and so yeah. you can get special teamers. But again, the special teams weren't very good last year, so I, I I don't know. I don't know how you upgrade that. It's I don't know if that's coaching or talent or both. But um, look, they yeah, and you you did bring back uh, Jake Bailey. Uh, Jason Sanders is Jason Sanders. Um, you know, he's they, you got to watch him from from 50 or more, which, you know, that's not necessarily ideal. But uh, it's it's going to be interesting. Danny Crossman is back. And yeah, that's an area where, you, yeah, you can you can do a little something, gain advantage. So uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hey, uh, thanks to everybody for joining us on, on this edition of uh, Dolphins Deep Dive with Perk. We appreciate the big numbers that we're getting here. Uh, we will see you. Uh, I, I, actually, I don't know if it's next week or, or two weeks. I think it's two weeks. Come on, Perk, anyway, do it next week. Do it. I, I, don't, I don't, We'll see. Are you coming back next week? Oh, yeah. I, let me let me check my date book. Okay. <laughs> Exactly. All right. Thanks to everybody. We will see you in the at some point in the next two weeks here on Dolphins Deep Dive with Perk. You're watching SunSentinel.com.